Hey, welcome friends, here we are. Hello, hello, what's the date? 4th of April 2022, here we are. It is a uh, chat with Matt. It might be the 3rd of April where you are. Is my camera straight? Doesn't look that straight, but anyway. Uh, yeah, chat with Matt. How can I help you? What's going on? <laughs> How can I be of service? How are you guys progressing through um, this crazy thing called life at the moment? What am I trying to do here? I'm trying to get to this group. There we go, I'm on live, that's great. Oh yeah, and Jen's asked a question, that's right. How can I cultivate a deeper sense of safety within myself? Internal stability. Hey Sister Mary. Ah uh, yeah, this is a great question. That's a great question, that's what we've been talking about with uh, the, the current uh, new moon, with, which came with the uh, solar eclipse, hey Jess. Um, so yeah, thinking about this idea of security and sort of expanding out of um, these false senses of security that, that we've been sort of trained to believe uh, that we should aspire to, you know, um, trying to make ourselves safe by having money in the bank and a good job and relationships we can count on and a, and a stability in our, you know, our domestic situation, our home life, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, I think that's one thing that we've learned over the last few years with this whole pandemic carry on and, and everything else that's going on in the world with, uh, you know, wars and uh, financial instability, et cetera, et cetera, is the world is not as safe, stable, uh, predictable as we've kind of been led to believe that it is, which I, which I think is a good thing which I think is a good thing because it, it's it's inspiring us, it, it's pushing us really uh, to have a, you know, a re-evaluation of where we're putting our, where we're putting our effort. Um, and most of us have been, you know, manipulated into, educated into, uh, indoctrinated into, putting our effort into achieving things in the external world, um, climbing the ladder of success and, and all of the supposed to's and the rights and the shoulds that we've been sort of led to believe will ultimately lead to our happiness, right? We will develop a level of safety and security that then will then will then will be conducive to us relaxing into enjoyment, <laughs> right? That once we've got a certain amount of money in the bank, then we'll be able to relax and then we'll be happy. Once we've got the husband or the wife and and we've had the kids, etc., uh, and we've had a promotion at work, then we'll be able to relax and then we'll be happy. Um, and until then, we're, we're in a level of stress as we clamber towards um, wanting these desires to be fulfilled. And of course, we're left wanting, we're left in lack, we're left struggling and um, striving and trying really hard to achieve these um, projections that we believe are the key to our happiness. And lo and behold, we are... Um, we're disappointed every step of the way, generally, most people, you know, short hit of satisfaction that you achieved a great goal that you've been working on for, you know, some time, you know, you got your education, you got your college degree, you got a job after college, etc, etc. When's the happiness supposed to start coming? What's the next thing on the list that I need to achieve? Um, you know, oh yeah, I haven't got the million dollars yet. I'm not driving a, a fancy enough car yet. I, I haven't got a boat and a caravan yet. Uh, once I've got those things, then I'll be happy, right? And um, yeah, disappointment after disappointment until, you know, we, we witness some people achieve every success in the external world, you know, climb to great heights of fame and fortune and uh, been met with still a deep sense of dissatisfaction and nothing left on the list to achieve, so no more excuses, no more thing to clamber after, which is then incredibly depressing for these people. And unfortunately, they have a tendency to uh, self-destruct at that point or have a massive spiritual breakthrough and a complete change in their attitude, which also happens, which is a great thing. But um, most of us are not going to get to that point where we've achieved everything on this mythical list and therefore we get the ultimate disappointment and the opportunity to make a huge shift at that point. Many of us can choose to make a big shift right now. And that's what we've been working with, 
How do we shift our attention off achieving this external sense of safety and thus a sense of security in ourselves because we've achieved X, Y, and Z and they add up to safety and therefore we are secure in what we've achieved in the external world. Uh, this is the hard bit because even when we are achieving this, these things that we perceive uh, create safety in the external world, we're less inclined in today's um, reality to believe that those things are secure, that they're not going to change because we're seeing change in such radical ways uh, at such a rate and such a chaoticness that we haven't seen in thousands of years on this planet. Things are changing so quickly in terms of massive structural, energetic, foundational things are really, really changing and a lot of old things are falling apart like our financial system, our education system, our medical system, our judicial system, etc. Right, Many, many things in a state of, and our governance system, um, in a state of massive change which feels inherently unstable or unstable. Unstable is the right word. So how do I cultivate, this is Jim's question, how do I cultivate a deeper sense of safety within myself? So <clears throat> we can start with some very practical things like we can intellectualize this a little bit and, and you know, look back in history and see how we, you know, this is what I've tended to do, is to see how even when things go wrong in the external world, I tend to survive. Even when I experience something that seems like a great loss, I get over it. So we can come to a recognition that inherently we are much more resilient than we give ourselves credit for, that we've weathered many, many storms and we've recovered from injuries and we've recovered from illnesses and we've re recovered from losses, whether they be uh, emotional losses or financial losses. Uh, we've, we've, we've come up against all sorts of challenges in our life and we have persevered and we, we, we've, we've, we're still here, right? So that gives us a level of internal security. And, and when you really inquire into it, um, and, and you recognize how often grace has played a role in our um, survival or our thrival. I've got a very itchy nose. Um, when we recognize how often things have turned out or we've been saved from certain situations, uh, not through good management, but more through quote unquote good luck, right? Grace. And then we come to recognize that there is much more to our being than this little intellect and this physical body that's struggling and striving against the world. And we come to understand that uh, magical things, miraculous things are always really happening when we, when we have the eyes to see them. When we choose to direct our attention in that way, we come to realize that... Um, we are looked after and we are inherently on a level in that way safe. Of course, it gets very hard to reconcile how we can count on that happening every time because we have no proof that that is the case. Um, and this, I think, is part of the hard thing about a lot of, you know, our relationship with spirituality is there's no real cold, hard proof guarantee. There's no guarantee you may have had miraculous things happen in the past, but that's no guarantee. Miraculous things are going to happen in the future. We love the idea of guarantees. Our whole, you know, modern world is is built on these contracts and guarantees. Um, but they're really, they're really a little bit delusional in that, you know, life doesn't work that way. It, it's miraculous and it's spontaneous. And it runs on energy that's formed in moments. And so, but the more that we can expect something is going to happen, the more that it's likely to happen. That's hard because we also don't want to get disappointed. And when we, when we expect something's going to happen and by chance it doesn't happen, then we, then we really feel disappointed and that feels painful. And so, you know, there's a saying that the pessimist is really disappointed because if you keep expecting shit things to happen, then more or less they will. And you will never be surprised by bad things happening. And it's kind of like a defensive mechanism that is inherently sucks the joy out of life, but is better in a way, feels more safe than being surprised with a disappointment. 
<laughs> if we just expect life to be shit and then it is, then we kind of feel right that we can protect the, predict the world. Um, not a great way to live, not a great way to live, but unfortunately our egos love this idea of predictability. So to develop or cultivate a deeper sense of safety within us, we can work in this idea of, you know, remembering and journaling and meditating on how often things have turned out, um, even though, you know, it's beyond us how they did. And to really cultivate a belief that we are inherently safe as a being we are. Um, because if we believe that, then more than likely it, it comes to be more often, right? Because what we believe is the way that is, has a strong influence on how we perceive. What we believe really shapes our perception. And if we're perceiving that, um, that the world is working out for us and we are safe, Right. If we're believing that, then we're going to start perceiving that. So whatever happens, we can put a positive spin on it and go, oh, yeah, well, this didn't work out. But obviously, it's for my best good, my highest good. Right. We, we start believing that and then perceiving that. And, and, and that's how it is for us. Right. That's our reality, because that's all reality is, is our perception of it. I know. I know a lot of you will be going, no, no, no. Um, there is a reality and everyone's <laughs> there is no real reality. It's all individual. Reality is an individual thing um, based on how you're perceiving the reality. So to cultivate it, we just need to consciously, consistently believe it. But there is a deeper level than that, um, for me anyway, um, and, and it's you know, written in many scriptures as well, is when we really choose to invest time in having deeper experiences you know, in meditative states or lucid moments, if we put ourselves in the conditions where we're, you know, staring into the sunset or the sunrise or whatever, or with, you know, in high vibrational spaces and can relax into really feeling our connection with those moments and with that energy of that beauty and that miraculousness of the world around us, the natural world around us and the, the divinity within um, shared moments of relationship with others in these high vibrational experiences, it tends to foster a deeper sense of safety and security in ourselves. When we, you know, I could sum it up by saying, you know, we, we start to feel more internally safe when we have a deeper connection with who we truly be, when we really start to recognize and appreciate the divinity, the aspect of God source universe that we be, um, rather than identifying ourselves with the human struggling against the world to achieve X, Y, and Z in the name of our survival and our thrival. Because coming from that small space, um, the odds seem insurmountable that we're going to succeed, right? Uh, the, this seems, and, you know, intellectually and logically, we start, you know, looking at what could go wrong, you know, um, and there's plenty that could go wrong, of course. Um, but when we start to see that, that our being is immortal, and this, when this body drops to the ground that we don't end, when we start to have that, a deeper awareness and connection of that and a more visceral experience of the truth of ourselves. This is the point. So you can have the concept, you can read the scriptures and go, oh, wow, that's great. But it's very hard to believe until you start having experiences that back it up. You know, and, and some people have some very high vibrational experiences where they, you know, or near death experience where they really see it on a very, you know, um, a very real for them very real for them experience of, you know, the other side. But others of us who haven't had those experiences have to rely on a more subtle version. Or, well, you know, some people can go into meditation and have very real experiences in the astral world where they're talking with spirit and their guides and they really have uh, a strong belief in, the, in these experiences they're having in their own internal visions or their own internal audio um interaction with these relationships that we can have with with beings non-physical beings but a lot of us don't have that either i don't have that right i don't have 
visions of you know I, I don't work in that way I'm a, I'm a channel and when I relax I allow myself to speak in ways that uh, are beneficial um, so hey sister Jill so um, the point being if we choose to invest our time in meditating with an intent to come to know ourselves in a deeper way then that internal knowing starts to be more pervasive and more persuasive in forming a foundation by which we do the world, forming the foundation by which we perceive the world. When we consistently choose to meditate and feel deep into our heart the, the expansiveness and the magnificence and the deep sense of internal loving light vibration that is permeating us as a being, then that helps us to feel more safe and more accepting that we are much bigger than the human experience. And when we sort of have that understanding that we're much bigger and much more immortal, or much more infinite, much how can you be more infinite, but when we, when we recognize that we are this being that we've read about in scriptures and, and various peoples or we've heard other people talk about it, we start having experiences that sort of back up that beautiful concept then it becomes more easy to believe it. And as we believe it more, we start to perceive it more. And as we perceive it more, we inherently feel safer in the world. We inherently take some of the emphasis off trying to secure our safety and survival in the external world because we realize that if we were not to survive, it wouldn't be the end of the world. It wouldn't be the end of us anyway. It might be the end of the earth, but not the end of the proverbial world. Sorry, my nose is running for some reason. This is obviously a topic that's creating some releases in my field. Um, so, uh, hopefully that's answering some of this question, Jen. So, there's definitely ways that we can help ourselves cultivate a deeper sense of safety with, with rationale um, and looking at things with this intent, this, this bias, if you like. Um, but there's also, please be willing to dedicate and invest time in having the deeper experience of who you be and then trust that that brings a level of foundation that helps us to relax into feeling more internally stable and less pushed around by the trials and the tribulations of the world uh, and life and your experience of life that can feel quite destabilizing in the moment, right? Um, and be willing to be willing to hold space that you can be quite unstable in a moment or in a situation from the intellect or the emotional state and yet still have a deeper sense of stability going on internally. Remember that quite often what we're feeling, which can feel quite destabilizing, is what we are releasing. And when you remember that, you can take a step back from the, the fear-based response that you might be having to a particular situation and remember, ah, this fear-based response is the energies that I've been carrying from some other time that I'm now coming up to, to, to find peace with and to find acceptance around and to ultimately release the uh, influence that these energies have over me so that I no longer need to carry them. Yeah. So, um, hopefully that's helping. Sister Jill just wrote, Last week I did a Chiron healing session on a friend. Afterwards, he said all of nature seemed to have become more vivid. He was gasping at the beauty of the greens. I was blown away by that reaction. Oh yeah, I think that's quite a common reaction uh, to people having uh, an upgrade. I know I quite often, you know, uh, are blown away by how alive the world looks um, in certain moments when I'm in that sort of uh, more expansive state of mind um, or out of my mind is more correctly the term. Um, there is a, a, a magnificent, there's layers of magnificent beauty around everything that our eyes are choosing not to show us most of the time because it is not deemed important by a brain that has been educated into survival mode. 
we are much more interested in seeing threats than in seeing beauty. This unfortunately is, is how our biology has evolved over the last few thousand years and how the energies that we've been trained into through this lifetime. Um, and, you know, it, it's hereditary. And, you know, if our parents aren't seeing the magnificence of this energy field, then, then, then as a child, we soon shut down seeing it as well because no one's talking about it. Um, and so we've been educated out of seeing all of what our eyes are capable of seeing as they are right now. They're capable of seeing the, the vibrance of the energies around and through and, you know, even the luminescence of living things particularly. Um, everything's really living, even, you know, the, the paint on the wall in the building next to me has a life force to it. Hey, Sister Susie. And so, you know, there's more to that than my eyes are generally showing me most of the time. But when we uh, find a relaxation from the stressed, basic, goic sort of left brain thinking that is that is more around the logical and the survival uh, thing, and we allow ourselves to be a little bit more right brain, a little bit more creative, a little bit more loose, then we tend to see into this energetic world uh, more easily. But it comes and goes. For me, it comes and goes. You know, some days I really, um, I really, you know, can see more of it and then other days when I'm a little bit more stressed and a little bit more preoccupied with, you know, identifying with the challenges that are presenting themselves in the external world, then then then, then you lose that, right? So um, after a healing or after a deep meditation or after a deep relaxation or, or, or even after, you know, um, sometimes waking up in the morning after a really healing sleep that you might have had a deep sleep that you've released a lot of Tension, you've kind of had a bit of a reset and you've sort of woken up in the morning and you pull the curtains and you just sort of gasp in beauty of uh, what's going on outside, you know, that's available. <clears throat> and, and more and more layers of that are available. And there's so many layers uh, to, to what is available to us to both see through the physical eyes and to also perceive energetically um, beyond what the, the capacity of the eyes and the retina are capable of doing is there for us. We, we are very sensory organs here. This, this, this physical meat suit that we wear is basically a sensory interface with a world that we've created. You know, it's an avatar that allows us to experience um, these things in awesome ways, right, that inspire awe. Um, but unfortunately, we've chosen not to utilize a lot of what, is, what, is, what we have capacity for. So um, it's exciting because more and more this is coming online. And, you know, as the vibration is rising on the planet, um, the nature is vibrating with higher and higher frequency. So it's becoming easier and easier to see into these realms. And um, as we choose to relax out of the intensity of the fear-based propaganda that we're being <laughs> bombarded with, and that society is resonating with right now, because unfortunately we're, we're sort of very much influenced by the collective vibration, and the collective vibration right now is very much in fear and uncertainty and of what's going on, because that's how they're being manipulated. Um, and that influences us, because we as empathic, sensitive beings are picking up very much on the collective vibration and it's not easy for us to expand out of that. It is very much possible, but it's not easy for us to bring some remembrance to the fact that our vibration is being continually degraded by what's going on around us, even if we're not watching the news, even if we're not listening to the media or doing friggin' social media, etc. Just by the very vibration of humanity around us, it takes conscious effort to expand beyond that, to allow that to wash over us and through us without overly influencing what we are capable of. But when we have a healing session, right, um, or, or some such, we, we can quite often get respite from all of that and we are sort of helped into uh, a high vibrational relationship with the world and how we're perceiving the world and that's exciting and, and you know, can be very, very life-changing because, um, you know, for people who, who haven't been open to, to that, to actually see it with their own eyes, uh, can really open some doors for them to inquire more deeply. Of course, it does take a, a degree of effort, uh, not insurmountable degree of challenge, 
to um, to persist because it's very very soon that will be degraded again by the vibration and the habits of the person. You know, going back into normality soon brings their energy back to base level again, um, and it requires this consistency to relax out of the stressors of the world and the and the influence of habitual ways of reacting and responding and relating to the world that keep us at status quo. I missed Susie's comment, so I'll just scroll back to that. Just finished your new moonlight language meditation. So good. Awesome. Great that you caught that um, around stability. It did trigger a few people. I know. I got a few comments that people felt a little bit depressed after that, uh, after that, um, light language experience and the talk that I gave before it, uh, they felt that I was talking too much about the problems and not enough about, you know, trying to lift them into hopium. Um, you know, that's part and parcel of it, right? We, we <laughs> I don't really plan what I say in those. And I do recognize that I did talk a lot about, you know, potential problems because it's, it, it is very important, I believe, that we shake ourselves free of allowing ourselves to keep clinging to uh, old school ways of finding safety. Um, and we have to be aware that a lot of these uh, habitual ways of, of doing safety in the world and feeling secure in the world are not going to support us moving forward so that we can let go of those and really then have the capacity to install a deeper sense of internal uh, safety and security. So I know it's uncomfortable to face the fact that, you know, the, sick, the ship is sinking, I think I used as an analogy several times. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, it's time to get off that ship, right? It's time to redirect your attention out of the external ways and try to, quote unquote, fix the old world and allow yourself to come back to, you know, aligning yourself with the new world. Hey, Brother Rich. So, um Jill just wrote, I felt I needed to grasp the bull of Taurus by the horns. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's acting up right now. <laughs> the external world of, of that sort of Taurian vibration. Anyway, I want to go back. So that was from Jill wrote, this time last week, I was in meltdown due to my house sale purchase chain collapsing. And I started to ask why. And what were you? I'm going to read that down here. See more. And I started to ask why and what I needed to face up to around this. Security issues from childhood and feeling of no control in my situation came up and smacking me in the face. I'm accepting now that if I have to sell my house in advance of having an... Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, a, in advance of having a new one to go to... It'll open up an opportunity to live a nomadic and travel and not have the regular house burden to hold me still. I'm going to Devon tomorrow to view a couple of houses in total different areas and I'll just see how it goes. These are tough ones for me to face. Awesome, Jill. Awesome. And, and this is it, right? <clears throat> it's time to, to let go of, you know, pinning our sense of security in having physical assets such as a house, which, you know, has been huge for us through the last many thousands of years living on this. I'm going to try and get rid of this calendar notification. I did without it dragging me off. Um, you know, having safe housing and, you know, uh, a fortress to, to retreat to uh, from the world has been very important to us for thousands of years on this planet. Um, very few of us have felt safe living a nomadic life, especially you know, us from Anglo-Saxon slash Caucasian, you know, the Northern Hemisphere um, or, or away from the tropics areas uh, where we've had to, you know, overwinter and et cetera, and we've needed uh, strong, warm dwellings to do so. And it has been quite warring uh, where we've had to defend ourselves and, and you know, stone walls, etc., cetera, uh, have been helpful in that. So to break free of that level of security is not easy. 
Um, but I do believe it's beneficial for us to face these fears. I'm not saying that we all should live nomadic lives, not at all. It's not, nothing wrong with having a house. It's whether we, quote-unquote, need a house in order to feel safe and secure. That is, that's a limitation, right? That's, 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 that's holding us back. So it's time to face these fears so that we can overcome the need of a lot of these things. It's not wrong to have money in your bank and, and investments and etc. either. But whether, if you need them in order for you to feel relaxed, then you're behoven, you're held captive by that whole system. But if you have a deeper sense of safety beyond these things, then you can have these things without being attached to them and without forming a codependent relationship with these external forms of security and safety. So, yeah, full power to you and a lot of uh, support as you move through this process. Uh, you know, we, we're kind of in the same boat over here with our house sale seemingly going through and yet us not uh, really knowing what we're going to do after we sell. Uh, I'm looking at various properties and none of them really are measuring up uh, yet. Um, so it's, it's, it's time to have faith and to trust. Susie wrote in regards to the uh, new moon call that I did a couple of days ago. No, I thought it was perfect. Did the opposite for me. Help me relax with the energy that's been so intense. <clears throat> yeah, well, it's, it's interesting how, and I tried to point it out to, to uh, this one person in particular who was, you know, almost suggesting that I should pull it down, the replay down, because it wasn't appropriate. <laughs> that's to the level that she thought uh, it was not, you know, I'd missed the mark. Um, with with that um, with that um, whatever session facilitation because she'd had such a reaction to it, I did try to point out to her that other people hadn't had the same reaction and that this was her reaction. Not that she's wrong, but this is an opportunity for her to 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 you know relax into the experience and not make me and the and the and the transmission wrong for providing or provoking a response that she found uncomfortable, but to rather look at this the experience that she was having as a healing experience, right? Um, that's not easy for a lot of people because a lot of people, when they're feeling uncomfortable, they have to make someone else wrong for it, right? Um, and so, and so um, this is it. And it's hard. It's hard. We all do this, right? When we, when we come up against... The first reaction when we come up against a difficult situation is to try and find what we should blame for it. <laughs> what went wrong? Who's, who, <laughs> whose fault is this, right? That I'm feeling so uncomfortable right now rather than going first at first sight to I'm having an uncomfortable experience. What can I gain from this? You know, most people don't go there and I don't go there very often either at first, you know, when something bad, quote unquote, something bad, uncomfortable happens, then we want to, you know, we want to blame something. Uh, rather than relax into the gift that's unfolding. This is normal human behavior. And as we practice, we just get better at pulling ourselves up sooner rather than later. Good morning, Sister Emily Rose. Um, we get better at pulling ourselves up you know, sooner rather than later and redirecting our attention to what is the gift here? What, what, what can I benefit from this uncomfortable situation? What if no one's wrong in what has just happened, even though you know, I'm feeling uncomfortable and this could happen and that could happen and how's this going to flow downstream from here, you know, when things go down, when shit happens. Uh, you know, we we get into this mentality of, of trying to mitigate the pain from spreading, right, from things escalating or, de or, or disintegrating around what's just happened. Um, you know, we try and contain it, the, the thing that's going wrong, and, and then we try and work out what went wrong so we can prevent it from happening again in the future, right? We want to learn from it so that we can avoid that pain. This is the way we've been trained. This is the way humanity's been trained. Pain is wrong and pain is to be avoided. And so, um, unfortunately, that keeps us stuck in a stress-based cycle where we're always on guard trying to ascertain what situations might you know, provoke pain in our lives and then trying to avoid them at all costs. Um, and this keeps us very, very trapped from having and and dissociated uh, from having awesome experiences that are available if we were to give ourselves more freedom and we're not so uh, contracted around trying to avoid bad things happening. If we're scared of dying, we can't really live, right? If we're scared of pain, we can't really enjoy. This is this is uh, the truth. You know, there's a saying that you can only experience love to the to the capacity that you're willing to experience pain. 
um, or loss, I think is the saying, right? Which is basically painful. So um, if we keep try and keep ourselves guarded and safe, we're going to stay very close to neutral where we don't feel much pain and we don't feel much joy. We keep surviving, but what the fuck's the point, right? <laughs> What's the point? We didn't come here to 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 win a competition of how many li- how many years we could keep breathing for. That's not the point of our lives. We're not here to set some record in how many how many breaths we took on the planet without without succumbing to the death. Uh, experience. We're here to live. We're here to have experiences that are expansive and purposeful for us on a soul level, on on an energetic level. That's what we're here to do. And some people do that in remarkably short lives and other people have very, very long lives that were remarkably (laughs) non-achieving. So (laughs) we don't need to be at either extreme would be my uh, guidance, right? It's not that we need to, you know, live hard and die young to to be successful, not at all. But we do need to overcome the fear of pain and the fear of death in order to allow us to take what is perceived as a risk and actually follow our heart into situations that are uh, inherently uh, purposeful and, and beneficial for us. Awesome, my friends. I'm just glancing at the time. I see I've pretty much <clears throat> gone over just for a change and I do have a call coming up in 20 minutes. So uh, I might love you and leave you there. Uh, hopefully you answered Jen's question. Um, uh, hopefully I haven't missed anything else. Holding space for you, Jill, as you continue. Um, you know, Saturday was a powerful day. Uh, was Sunday here, but it was a powerful day of the new moon and the eclipse. So appropriate to sit, shed some tears or whatever other way that we may have progressed through uh, what was coming up to release in terms of what's, you know, we're contracted around in, in, especially around this idea of safety and security in the external world and finding a deeper internal uh, experience of that. (sighs) Parting advice, my friends, relax. Take some deep breaths. Do whatever you need to to try and no, let me rephrase that. Do whatever you need to with an intention to release the stress response from your body. Understanding that as you release it from your body, you're going to find some mental uh, relief as well and some emotional relief. Relax your body, allow your mind and emotional self to follow suit, and uh, be open to how um, miraculous life is. Um, enjoy the powerfulness of this time, Sister M. Um, and much, much love. I think you've got a, a call coming up soon. I can't, I can't remember exactly when, um, but enjoy that opportunity to be of service and to really be in your light and to be expressive as such. Much, much love, my friends. Um, awesome. Go and sing. Jill said I was late this evening because I was out singing. Felt good. Yeah, whatever it is, you know, if it's if it's your meditation practice, if it's exercise, if it's singing, if it's dance, if it's painting, if it's whatever, whatever really uh, cuddling your cat, whatever it, whatever it is for you that gives you that opportunity to relax out of the stress that the world is trying to keep you trapped in. That's important. That's how we really rebel against this world is, is choosing to relax right now when the world is so um, fixated or so determined to keep us stressed and in fear and divided, right? Our job is to relax into a deep sense of faith, to embrace love and to unite in the the commonness of humanity while really recognising, appreciating um, and honouring the diversity (coughs) of of our uniqueness. Awesome. Awesome. Enjoy your gardening as well. Exactly, Susie. Uh, Get into the garden and all of those good things that we have available to us. Okay, friends. Much, much love. I'll speak to you again next week, if not before. Bye for now.